scientists found 6,000-year-old human remains, but shockingly, no other people share their DNA. So, if they have no ancestors or descendants, then who are they? In the lush, steamy forests of the Colombian Amazon, ochre-painted cliffs whisper tales thousands of years old. Meanwhile, high in the Andean Altiplano, the bones of ancient hunter-gatherers reveal secrets that challenge what we thought we knew about the peopling of the Americas. Two groundbreaking studies, one exploring the vibrant rock art of La Lindosa, and the other decoding ancient DNA from the Bogota Plateau, have converged in a stunning revelation. Colombia is not just a corridor in the great migration story of the Americas. It is a crucible of lost peoples, forgotten languages, and mysterious ancestries, many of which have left no living descendants. Imagine standing on the Bogota Plateau 6,000 years ago. You are among a small community of hunter-gatherers living at over 2,600 meters in altitude. You know the land intimately, its cycles, its dangers, its spirit world. But what you may not know is that your genetic legacy, distinct and ancient, will vanish without a trace. This is the story told by the study of 21 individuals from the Altiplano, published in Science Advances in May 2025. The DNA extracted from their bones reveals something astonishing. The earliest people in this region, those living 6,000 years ago, belonged to a previously unknown basal lineage. This group branched off from the initial migration wave into South America, but did not share the genetic markers common in later Andean, Amazonian, or coastal populations. In fact, they were not genetically related to any known ancient or modern Native American group. Their DNA shows no signs of admixture with Clovis-related peoples like Anzic One or the enigmatic seafarers of the California Channel Islands. Instead, they appear as an isolated offshoot, perhaps stranded by waves of newer arrivals sweeping through South America. By 2,000 years ago, these people were completely replaced by migrants from Central America, likely speakers of Chipchan languages, who brought new ceramic traditions and agricultural practices. The newcomers had closer genetic ties to modern Panamanians and Costa Ricans than to indigenous Colombians today. This revelation is monumental. It tells us that some of the first South Americans, who had likely lived and died in the highlands for millennia, left no linguistic, cultural, or genetic footprint in the populations that followed. They are a ghost lineage, invisible in modern genomes, and all but erased from human memory. Meanwhile, deep in the Serenia de la Lindosa rainforest, another story unfolds. Not in genes, but in pigments. High on vertical sandstone cliffs, red ochre figures march, dance, and morph in a sprawling tableau of animals, people, and hybrid beings. This rock art, among the most extensive in the world, has captivated archaeologists, linguists, and ethnographers alike. But what does it mean, and who painted it? The study of these murals, centered on Cerro Azul, uncovers a mesmerizing complexity. Unlike European cave art, which often mirrors the species hunted for food, La Lindosa's imagery appears disconnected from the archaeological faunal remains. Fish bones dominate the zoo archaeological record, piranhas, catfish, and pacu, but fish are nearly absent in the art. Armadillos were frequently consumed, yet barely appear. Instead, the art teems with deer, monkeys, snakes, crocodiles, and even therianthropes, creatures part human, part animal. This is not a record of dinner. It is a visual cosmology. Many figures defy biological accuracy. Serpents have legs. Bats stare face forward in ways unknown in nature. Deer leap across panels in animated motion. What emerges is a world where animal, 
human and spirit are not rigidly divided, but interconnected. Interviews with contemporary indigenous elders, Tucano, Desana, and Nukak, confirm this worldview. These images, they say, do not simply represent animals. They are ancestors, guardians, shapeshifters. They are beings seen not only with the eyes, but in trance, ritual, and myth. The concept of new animism, articulated by scholars like Reichel Dolmatov, Descola, and Vivieros de Castro, helps us understand this ontological fluidity. To these Amazonian groups, animals are not other. They are persons, often more than human persons, whose roles in the ecosystem are spiritual as well as practical. The jaguar is not merely feared or hunted. It may be a shaman, a transformed human, a being with its own point of view. This blurring of categories renders Western taxonomies impotent and challenges the traditional boundaries between zoology and religion, art and sustenance. This divergence between the zoo archaeological record and the rock art raises essential questions about how we interpret ancient cultures. In most Western archaeological frameworks, subsistence drives behavior. If you eat a lot of fish, you paint fish. If you hunt deer, you carve deer bones. But the evidence from La Lindosa suggests a deeper, more symbolic relationship to nature. Take the mysterious Therianthropes. These figures, which blend human and animal traits, appear to be intermediaries between worlds. They reflect shamanic transformation and vision journeys, ideas still present among indigenous Amazonian communities. In some cases, elders interpreted these as representations of spirit guides or ancestors. Others recalled traditional stories where animals become people, or vice versa. A continuity of belief that may stretch back thousands of years. Meanwhile, the absence of certain animals in the bones, but presence in the art, such as monkeys, snakes, and birds, suggests cultural taboos or spiritual reverence. These may have been animals too sacred to eat, or those believed to carry the souls of the dead. Alternatively, their bones may not preserve well, or their remains may have been treated ritually rather than discarded with food waste. Thus the paintings at Terro Azul become more than prehistoric graffiti. They are ritualized documents of identity, cosmology, and ecological belonging. They suggest that the artists were not merely recording the world. They were engaging with it, shaping it, honoring it. Back in the highlands of the Altiplano, the genetic study sheds light on another dramatic theme, the replacement of entire populations. After 2,000 years ago, the basal hunter-gatherers of the Bogota Plateau vanish from the genomic record. Their places are taken by people with Chibchan-related ancestry who likely migrated from Central America. These migrants brought ceramic technologies and maize cultivation and eventually evolved into the Musca culture, one of the most complex societies in pre-Columbian Colombia. The DNA evidence reveals that these newcomers were genetically closer to Panamanians and Costa Ricans than to indigenous Colombians today. In fact, present-day Colombian indigenous populations do not carry the same genetic signal as the ancient Herrera and Muisca peoples. This implies another demographic shift after Spanish colonization, perhaps involving migrations, assimilation, or selective survival. Linguistically, the Chibchan language family provides intriguing support. With deep roots and wide geographic spread, it may have originated in Colombia and spread north, or vice versa. Regardless, the Chibchan speakers of today carry the legacy of that 2,000-year-old migration, both in genes and language. Yet the earliest people of the Altiplano, the Chequa group, left no such legacy. Their languages are unknown, their culture is lost, their only memorial 
lies in the silent bones beneath the Andes. What happens when genetics, archaeology, and indigenous cosmology collide? We get a portrait of Colombia, not as a backwater of ancient migration, but as a dynamic arena of cultural transformation, spiritual depth, and genetic mystery. The people of the Altiplano and the artists of La Lindosa may never have met. One painted animals as spirits, the other hunted in the highlands. One left pigment on stone, the other left DNA in bone. But together they illuminate a forgotten past, a past in which identity, ancestry, and meaning were constructed not with the boundaries of modern science, but through a reverence for the living world and its many unseen dimensions. It is a past that warns us. Not all ancestors leave descendants. Not all stories are written in words. And not all knowledge comes from survival. Some comes from listening, to stone, to pigment, to genes, and to the silence in between.